Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Valeria Espinosa. And my name is Andrea Bravo. And today we're going to be presenting on the girl who couldn't eat or drink. Our patient is Lachey Hamblin. At the time she was diagnosed with this unknown illness, she was 14 years old and had not been able to keep any food or drinks down her system. As of right now, she is around 23 years old. The article starts off by them saying that they went on a Costa Rica trip, which is, was to celebrate Lachey's birthday. And as they were on a hike, a raccoon came out of nowhere and went to go attack um, Lachey. However, it was no open wound and it was just a scratch. Throughout the vacation, she was seemed normal. However, when they returned back to Utah, her and her mom came down with some type of stomach virus. And later on, the mom did get better. However, Lachey didn't. And then the mom remembered that about the raccoon scratching Lachey, thinking it was rabies. So the mom took Lachey to a pedi- pediatrician, and they instructed to take Lachey to an emergency department for a vaccine to pre- prevent rabies. She received a shot, and she was sent to take basic blood work test in which everything came back to normal and they sent her home and told her that um they told her that it, she was fine however the condition got worse by days uh, days go on <laughs> um the condition did get worse and it wasn't getting better so they took her to get more tests done however they came back normal the only thing that persisted was the vomiting And once again, she was sent to the primary children's hospital due to the concern of her being dehydrated. She spent four days in the hospital where they conducted various tests. And when they told her that everything was normal and it was basically all in her head, the mom took her home to get a second opinion. That is when she was taken to the University of Utah Health Medical Center, where the provider sent Lachey back to the Intermountain Primary Children's Hospital. In summary, um, Lachey went to the emergency room and they got a chest port which was inserted into her and it was linked to her heart. However, this could be dangerous because any type of bacteria and germ could be entered and it could cause an infection that could be really deadly. And they also tried various forms of medication that the doctors prescribed to her which made her feel worse throughout the days. And there was one medication which is unknown to us that um, created lockjaw for her. And this led to the family losing trust to the medical professionals for not being more careful with her. Here's some medical terminology from the article. We aren't going to go over all of it. It is just here to, it's just provided for you guys to understand the terms we are referring to um, throughout the presentation. Um, some important ones are celiac disease, an illness caused by an immune reaction to eating gluten. And, and then uh, cyclovalmine syndrome, also known as CVS, is a condition that involves um, recurrent episodes of vomiting with three main features, which are sudden onset, stereotypical, and periods of wellness between episodes. And then regurgitation, hopefully I'm saying that right, is the action of bringing swallowed food back up to the mouth. And then rumination is a condition in which someone is repeatedly (laughs) regurgitates undigested or or undigested food from the stomach. The last term we're going to be going over is POTS, um, and that is when your heart rate increases very quickly after getting up from sitting or lying down. And then for the medical history, uh, Lachey's medical history is that she only had toe surgery, and for the family medical history, four members that as of known now um, have gotten acne, cancer, which is either skin or melanoma, and then also eczema. The symptoms Lachey was experiencing were very odd because she was only experiencing vomiting, constipation, dizziness, and headaches. However, she wasn't experiencing nausea, abdominal pain, or diarrhea, or as a matter of fact, any other symptoms that the doctors, like the doctor's diagnosis would typically have. And then for some tests that she took while being in the emergency rooms, they took a neurological exam, which vomiting without nausea could be caused by increased blood pressure in the brain, and the results came back normal. They also did blood work, which also came back normal, and they also thought it could be a gastroparesis, which was caused by the virus uh, that Lachey and her mom had, and it should have gone away. And then an MRI came, they also took an MRI, and that also came back normal. More tests conducted were blood, stool, and urine tests to look for bugs that could that could cause vomiting. It wasn't 
dia and it also wasn't a parasite infection they also tested her for helicobacter pylori um and that came back negative as well it wasn't celiac disease if she wasn't pregnant her liver pancreas and kidneys also came back normal And then these are the records from her first ever um, medical med medical emergency all the way to her last assessment as we, sh we have known from the article we have read. We're not going to go over the records um, one by one. They're just here provided to give more um, in-depth information if interested. For, our pr for the doctor's predictions, there was two main predictions. They, their main one was rumination. Um, which was the primary prediction because her, um, however, her and her mom didn't want to believe that she had this because when it was first presented to her, they made, the doctors made it seem that it was all in Lachey's mind and that she had total control over what was happening to her when in reality, rumination is something that the patient has no control over because it's physical. The second prediction was POTS, which is a pathological feature um, in different and difficulty getting blood to the brain when going, for, when going from lying down to standing up. Tests were ran in which Lachey's blood pressure and heart rate were tested while she was laying down and when told to get up, her heart rate increased, but her um, blood pressure dropped, which usually means that it's not POTS because with POTS, her heart rate would go up but her blood pressure would stay the same. Despite that, for some reason, the doctor so believed, believed she had POTS. And then for the doctor's final uh, prediction uh, or diagnosis, they um they said it was rumination, and it for her for Lachey it was never treated, and the parents in Lachey never wanted to accept the possibility of her having it, but the doctors recommended her to attend an intensive program in the national nation nationwide children's hospital to treat the nerve uh, rumination. However, they never attended it. These are our final conclusions. After conducting a variety of research, we realized that we also believe Lachey has rumination syndrome because she was never treated for it and any other disease or parasite infection doesn't correlate to the symptoms Lachey had. However, we do believe that something with the raccoon bite and stomach virus that she got after Costa Rica led to her getting rumination syndrome. Um, she was never treated for it, like we previously stated, um, due to the fact that for treatment, she would have to participate in diaphragmic breathing and in get inserted a feeding tube, which she, was, which she didn't want at all. As of our thoughts, we think it's also rumination system because the main predicted diagnosis was rumination. However, Lachey never got it treated for, a re for it resulting to her to never knowing if that was true or not. And then over time, she learned to live with it, living her day-to-day -day life. However, we feel like she should have pursued this treatment recommendation so she could see at, or at least know that she did have it or not and be able to see if she was able to get it treated in another certain way. Um, and then these are our work cited. Thank you for listening.